guys so much for coming. Um, I'm the author of Save the Assistance, a guide for surviving and thriving in the workplace, based on the website of the same name. And I'm going to be moderating today, but I'm going to let these ladies here introduce themselves first. So um, how about we start with Doreen, and if you just want to give your full name, say what you do, and then a sentence or two about kind of what goes on at your job. Sure. Um, my name is Doreen Dardashtian. Um, I work at USA Network, the television channel. If you're not familiar with USA Network, or the channel that plays Law and Order Marathon. Um, but we have our own original content as well. Um, I do, uh, I'm a broadcast designer. I, I do on-air graphics, um, basically uh, animations. Um, and I, my job is basically to maintain the look and the brand of the network. Um, and, yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is Leticia Johnson, and I currently do web production at um, Sony Corporation of America. And while Sony has many different levels of the company and branches, like, you know, Sony Pictures, Sony Music, blah, 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 what I specifically do, like I said, I'm a Sony Corporation of America, and I specifically work at Sony.com. And basically, Sony.com is a 250-page website that serves as a main hub to all of our other websites. So in other words, you're going to come to Sony.com, and you can branch out to, to PlayStation, Sony Pictures, Music, Online Entertainment, anything that is a Sony property. And um, my job as a the web production assistant is to maintain our branding and marketing compliance of the website. I do production, whether it's uh, with you know, Photoshop, um, uh, link updates, QA, what are our links, QA testing, um, updating our tabs, um, our, the tabs on the website, our web pages. Um, uh, I do also I do like I said um, front, more front end coding HTML CSS and JavaScript. I do uh, reporting with Omniture for those of you who are familiar with Omniture. Omniture is a um, web marketing um, program where you use to basically report statistics for who's clicking on our website, how often, blah blah blah. So it's you know half and half production and half um, technical coding as well. So, and that's pretty much right. Uh, my name is Colleen Tucker, and I work for Warby Parker. I wear, um, and we're an online, uh, an online company, a startup that sells glasses online for like a quarter of the price you would traditionally pay if you were to go into like a standard brick and mortar shop. Um, yeah, we launched in 2010 and we've just gained a lot of traction so far. Um, and for every pair that we sell, we donate a pair to someone in need um, in the United States and in the developing, in the de developing world. Um, and I do all of the, or a lot of the uh, recruiting, uh, onboarding, training, and professional development for everyone. So hiring people, making sure they're comfortable once they get there, um, and then making sure people are happy in their jobs and having a good time and growing the company. Awesome. So I'd like to start off, we were actually going to start off kind of talking about what to do your first week at a job, how to get acclimated. But I think we're actually going to start before that, and we're going to talk a little bit about the interview process. And when you walk into a company, how do you get a sense of the corporate culture? How do you get a sense of what it's going to be like to work there? So let's start with Letitia. Um, have you ever had an experience where you learned about the company while you were in? Uh, yeah, um, I've definitely had a different experiences in different jobs where, on one hand, you get a job description on paper, and you're like, oh, I can do this in my sleep, and you may practically win a job over the phone or in an email because you know you have the skills necessary and initially they may sound very eager to have you in and sometimes they show up for the interview and you, and how you say, a uh, person who's interviewing you may not be expecting somebody like you and it could be something superficial, it could be how you wear your hair, it could be how you dress, it could be your race, it could be, I wouldn't say your gender, I think somebody would probably have an idea of what your gender is, but I mean, you never know, there are many challenges that can come in a workplace where you show up for an interview, and I mean, sometimes you can win somebody over anyway, but sometimes, you know, I mean, I've been in a situation where no matter how well I talk or how, how much I back up what I've done previously, I knew within five minutes, oh man, I, I'm not getting this job, all I can do at this point is hold my dignity and um, not say something stupid and just keep it moving and move on to the next job. Um, luckily, I guess at this point, since I'm you know doing both uh, creative and technology, I guess you could say there's a lot of jobs out there 
you know, at this point now. But you know, just you know, more so years before, you know, I, I have a, had a lot of those experiences more so. Um, and, and you know, sometimes all you can do, like I said, is you know, you, you, you put your best foot forward when you initially come in. The best thing I can say in order to prepare before you go in, research the job. I mean, we have so many resources now with technology and one-on-one -on -one networking, and it could be LinkedIn, it could be Glassdoor, it could be, you know, web, you know, looking up somebody's website, it can be, like I said, you go on LinkedIn, and you may find somebody that may have worked at a particular company in the past, not necessarily now, and you're, you know, you're here at Pratt, and you can also use your alumni network to look at people who may work at certain places. We have the resources now to, you know, to network either in person or online to research a company. You don't, at this point, want to go into a company where I call it cold. Because you may think a company is one thing and then you show up and it's a totally different vibe. Um, and not to take up too much time, but to make one point, I know like, I, I worked at MySpace for a year and I remember when I did the interview, it was, and I went into companies for the first time, I was like, you gotta be kidding me, right? They're, you know, like, I don't want to bad off anybody, but I'm gonna be honest, why not? Um, their technology was terrible. I was like, oh my god, I thought they would have like skated up art, like flat screen computers, and there would be like robots or something. I don't know, like it's my space, you know what I mean? And their technology was crap. It was like they had old, outdated PCs, and and it was like they were like an hour late for the interview, and then I did a second interview, and okay, it was more like 45 minutes, but and then I did a second interview, and then she was like a half hour late. And she looked like she was about to fall asleep. But um, <laughs> I got hired anyway. But it was an interesting experience of professionalism. I never would have known that MySpace was like that. But on my end, I didn't research. This was like years ago when people actually cared about MySpace, not you. But, <laughs> but on my end, I could say I didn't research MySpace before I went in for the interview. I was like, MySpace, they want to interview me. OK, I'll go in. But I wouldn't do that now. So that's the point I want to make. Do your research. Well, um, and some of us have also been on the other end of that, where we were the interviewer instead of the interviewee. Sir, what are some things that you should know before you go into an interview? Well, besides from the company, you know, yeah, do, do research the company. There's Wikipedia, um, read articles about the company, um, LinkedIn, like you said. Um, just find out who works there, what they do there, just so you have like a head start. Um, and um, and I also before I'm sorry, can you just repeat the question? <laughs> sure. What what would you tell someone to know before they go into a job interview? Right. Um, well, what I usually do, I usually do two things. Um, every time I apply for a job, I look at the job posting and I copy the job posting and I paste it into like a Word document and I save it on my computer mm -hmm. so that. When I go on the interview, I just like review the responsibilities again, just so like I know. Um, and um, if I do get the job the day before, I look over that again, just to, you know. Um, and I also, um, I'll pull up my resume and I'll look over that again, um, just to remind myself, and again, this is like if I, if I did get hired, just to remind myself like, okay, I was hired for a reason, I'm qualified. Um, it's just to instill some confidence. You look over all your accomplishments and it's like, okay, you want to have some confidence before your first day or before your interview. I think that, that really helps. Great. Yeah, just to add to that, um, so definitely review the job description. Um, and, you know, there's like usually like, like a job responsibilities, primary responsibilities, and it lists kind of a laundry list of the responsibilities of the job. And then there's the qualifications. You must be a self starter, detail oriented. You must be able to multitask. You must have X, Y, and Z skills. Um, what I would do is just look at those qualifications and think of previous experiences that you've had to show that you are X, Y, and Z. Um, that way, a lot of times they'll ask questions to kind of test, you know, how would you react to a situation to see if you're detail oriented. And then they'll be prepared and be able to draw from that experience that you've already had. Um, I think another thing, just because so many people are interviewing for such a small, such a few number of positions these days um, that you really have to, you really have to want it, and you really have to stand out. Um, so when you go in and, and you're talking to the interviewer, be super excited. Tell them why you're the best person for the job. Um, you know how you can differentiate yourself from other applicants. That's super duper important. 
um, just because you know I, I interview people. I interview a ton of people over the phone uh, and in person every day. And unless someone stands out from the crowd, they're easily forgotten. Um, I think the last thing I would do is just ask or come prepared with a few questions. You want to seem super interested in the company, super interested in the job, um, and you want to ask each interviewer some intelligent questions, um, you know, about the role or about the company, um, just to kind of show that you're interested. So, uh, a few questions that I like to ask, usually the interviewer will ask you a bunch, uh, then they'll turn it on you and say, do you have any questions for me? When people are like, no, not really, you're like, okay, so are they not that interested? Like, what's going on? But if people, um, you know, what's the company culture like here? Like, is there something, um, is there something that I didn't mention that you'd like to know from me, like anything? Um, give them that, but basically anything to kind of just show that you're interested. And what if, I think it's really important to talk about previous experiences that you had at other jobs and be able to use those examples. But what if you're coming straight from school and you don't have previous work experience? That's a, that's a good question. Um, so I think a lot of the qualities, you can transfer what you've learned in school. Um, like for example, um, like detail orientation, all that stuff that I already mentioned. You can think back to school projects or internships that you've had, or just experiences with friends or in groups or with teams um, where you actually are demonstrating those qualities um, and show that they can be transferred to an entry ish level job. Um, and um, yeah, I, I guess I guess that's basically it. I guess the other thing too is just to show that you know if it's a very like position where you need a lot of specialized skill. Um, just to kind of run over your qualifications, how you learned what you did, and how you be able to apply. And volunteer work does count. I mean, you know you don't get paid for it. Um, especially, you know, we live in this wonderful city called New York, and I can tell you from my experience, there's a lot of people, a lot of um, organizations here. Thank you a lot of help. Especially right now. Especially right now. Um, you know, of course, you know, we've got the hurricane, and of course, we need help with that. But, you know, speaking creatively, I mean, there's museums, there's art organizations, there's theater groups. I mean, there's all types of ways that you can use your creative skill in a volunteer basis, um, whether it's with print, interactive, painting, design, what have you. And that does count as experience, and all that, if you do a good job, that's a reference. So, and, it, and, and in some cases, volunteer work, if the organization has a budget, can, in, you know, in certain instances, lead to a future part-time or a full-time job. So. That's true. Right, yeah, and um, any side projects that you do, whether it's by yourself or with your friends, that also indicates, like, if you do work with friends, if you're a team player, or if it's like a side project that you did by yourself, like that's, that's good too. Some people work better by themselves. Just that it's just, it, it's a good way for them to get an idea of who you are. Um, so. Great, and so on that note, once you have been hired for the job, let's talk a little bit about what are some of the things that you want to do on your first day, your first week, and your first month, say, at a new job. Um, be very enthusiastic, like you're happy to be there. Hopefully you are happy to be there, you're not here to like act. Um, and, you know, people are probably gonna know like, oh, you're the new guy, you're the new person. So um, don't be shy to go around and, and introduce yourself and say hi. And um, also, uh, once you have met some people, I know like, uh, when you meet someone for the first time and you see them again in the hallway and you're kind of like, oh, do I say hi, do I not, should I look away, should I look at my phone and pretend like I didn't see you? Don't do that. Like, say hi and be like excited that you saw them. Like, oh, it was really great meeting you. And you don't have to say that, but just like, hey. Um, I would do that and I would also just observe how everyone works with each other, what kind of environment it, it is. Is it laid back? Is it like cutthroat? Is it um, are people really helpful and supportive and friendly, or is it like I don't know? Who knows? Whatever. Um, so um, yeah, but I think the main thing is, is try to be confident and try to be excited. I think it's also very helpful to take notes. I mean, in yeah. my experience, whenever I started a new job, um, you know, either like a little small notebook or a notepad has been invaluable. Because you're not going to remember everything, and you know, companies are getting larger and larger, and there's so much to soak in. I, mean, I don't care how good your memory is, you're just not going to remember all of it. Mm -hmm. um, you're just not. And I think, you know, even once you're at a job, don't be afraid to still go on LinkedIn and look people up. And you, you don't have to always add them. But I would say just, you know, you're like, oh, hi, you know, you know, 
and you meet people and you get somebody's name, you know, look them up, see what they do, because you're not gonna, you know, get all this info and, and you know, when you first meet people, so you get a sense of, you know, who people are, who's on your team, who's in the company as a whole, and also maybe get a sense of maybe what paths people have taken in the company, like somebody else that may have started out in your position, and they may not be like the senior vice president, or they may be, or they may be working in another position there or now that you may be interested in the future. So I would say basically don't stop just because you're at the job now. Continue your research. Because you know, companies are growing and are changing. So. Yeah, two really good uh, pieces of advice that I got that are pretty similar to that. One of them was at my first company, I drew a seating chart. Like I was a teacher, and it was the first day of school, but I'm bad with names. And I knew that I would remember everybody's name if I remember where they sat. So I actually just made a chart of the office and wrote their names down, and underneath I would write, not necessarily their job title, because a job title doesn't always explain what someone does, so I would write down, this is the guy you give all the paperwork to. <laughs> and I never would have showed that to anybody, but it really, really helped me to remember and know who I could go to with different problems. The other thing that I did was uh, try to remember one significant detail about each person that wasn't related to their job. So, for example, there was a guy who was a huge Mets fan, and I knew that every day after a game, he'd want to talk about it and know how it went. And people get really excited when they, you know something about them that isn't about work. They feel like you're really paying attention to them. So that was a super helpful skill for me in my first job. It also doesn't hurt to go to the cafeteria if they have one. I mean, that could be a good socializing place, or if they have a coffee shop downstairs, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, um, again, as you guys said, just not being afraid to introduce yourself. You go in, you think, I'm the new guy, they should be coming up to me. But that isn't the case. No. People are like, in the day-to-day, no. -day. they're in the day-to-day -day of, their, of their life at work, and they see this new face, and you know they're really busy, and although you know it would be great if people always went up and said hello, they don't. So um, sometimes it is on the new person to kind of go out and make that connection. I think the other piece of advice is just um, for the first couple of days um, to really just sit and soak everything in and don't. Not, not to not assert yourself or be confident, but really see how the office politics work and, and who does what and how you should kind of go up, approach each person because everyone needs to be dealt with differently. Um, a last thing is just at first, um, just show your enthusiasm, show how open you are, how much you want to learn, um, and kind of talk with your supervisor um, to get kind of expectations down for what you should be kind of thinking about in your first couple of weeks, couple of months. Um, where it, what you should be driving towards. Um, that way, right from the start, you kind of hit the ground running, you know exactly what's expected of you, how you should approach the job, and you can kind of go from there. And I think what's really important is, like Colleen said, everybody's kind of already working and they're used to the role that they're in. But if you know a lot about yourself and you know about how you work best, you can kind of give people a heads up about how they could interact with you. For example, I do much better if you give me written instructions versus if you tell me something I won't remember. So I told my boss, hey, this is super helpful. Would you mind sending me this same information in an email so I can have a copy? I learn really well when it's written down. And she was excited to hear that. It saved her a ton of time because she knew the best way to interact with me. And then she didn't have to guess after that. That's, that's so good. Yeah, yeah. communication yes. is key. I thought it was being way too forward. To be honest, I thought, oh my god, I'm telling her what she's supposed to be doing. But in the long run, it made both of our lives way easier, yeah. and she really appreciated it. Mm -hmm. It's right. all about how you frame it, it as long as you're not like, like pushing orders on it. Right. Yeah, it's making you're like, hey, I, just, I do communicate a little bit better, or I learn better if you write an email. So ask, well. don't, don't tell. Or ask, don't, don't tell, and just, <laughs> yeah, just the way you frame it, like your tone of voice, everything that goes into kind of asking something like that. So while we're on first day, uh, one of the most common questions that I hear is, what should I wear on my first day at work? I think. A good idea is like when you've done an interview, do a good visual cue of what the people in the office are wearing. Yeah. Particularly the person who's interviewing you. That's the best thing you can do. Even if it's business casual. Like business casual at a tech company might be totally different from business casual at um, I don't know, a bank or something. I don't know. You know, for some places it business casual can mean short sneakers. And well, have your nipples covered up, and anything else is fine. <laughs> but you know, seriously, I hey, I've seen some stuff. But you know, uh, whereas like you know, I've you know, I uh, worked at places was like, don't wear sneakers. You can wear jeans, but they can't be ripped. 
you know, or don't wear low, like low, you can wear a t-shirt, but it can't have a logo on it, you know. So take a good visual note, because business casual does not mean the same thing everywhere. That's the best advice I can give you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I definitely observe what people are wearing. You'll, you'll, you might even see it like on your way to, to your interview, like we'll walk you through mm -hmm. um, like the hall and just kind of take a peek. Um, but um, what's really cool about being creative and being in the industry is that it's pretty laid back. Um, sometimes you can get away with like just wearing jeans and like a nice top. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's not the same for every place. Um, and it definitely depends on the, the industry that you work in. Um, like I know, like I work in the, I work for USA Network, and the, the, like I work in post production. But I know in production, like you have you have to wear sneakers and you have to be comfortable because you're going to be yeah. walking around and you're going to be shooting stuff. And yeah. um, so, um, but yeah, I, I I think like on my first like three months up until I felt like I was really settled in, I think I wore like a nice shirt and. Like, dress and blazer or something and then I, once I kind of saw the like, scene what everyone was wearing and I started feeling comfortable, I was like, alright, I'm, I'm just going to wear jeans <laughs> So, Well, Colleen, you work in a startup. So, yeah. I wear, does that mean you get to bring your dog? <laughs> no, <laughs> my, uh, one of our founders gets dogs, so they're dogs. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, but I don't have a dog, so that doesn't really matter. And then, um, yeah, I wear jeans and like my Puma sneakers. A lot of the time, it's very casual there, um, and I think I, I'm so thankful for that because I can't imagine I watch my sister go to her law firm um, and she has to dress to the nines like all the time, and I just couldn't deal with that. Um, but back to your question, um, I think another thing you can ask, you know, a few days before your start, if you, you know, if you were interviewed in a kind of kind of secluded room where you didn't get a, a sense of what people were dressed like email someone, email your supervisor a few days before the start and say, hey, um, just curious, what should I wear? Like, I just want to make sure I'm on everything okay. They're usually really nice about that. I think also it's important to address, it's not just about your clothes. And there are a lot of companies where your hair matters, or how you groom yourself, or what kind of shoes you wear. So what are some of the other cues that you might want to try and pick up beyond just the clothes? Well, that kind of touches on, you know, company culture. So. <laughs> You know, I, I think certain fields you may need to be more outgoing, probably, and in certain fields it might be okay if you're very shy and retiring as long as you're, you bunker down and do your code or whatever. Um, that might be hard to tell when you're interviewing, so you might need to ask everyone about that and, you know, definitely observe when you start on your first day. Um, but that's definitely something to observe because, you know, you may realize maybe your personality doesn't match that company or it may be different segments of the company, you know, because, you know, com you know, you may, you know, your personality may fit, like, as a creative person, your personality might fit in one department, whereas in another department, it just won't fly. And, and, and it could be just a different, you know, you could be on a different floor, mm -hmm. and you may fit better on that floor than another floor. Yeah, and I think that's another thing where it's important to look around is the office. I worked at one startup where people dressed kind of conservatively and people didn't wear a lot of makeup to work and I tried to follow that, but I've also worked at companies where everybody had crazy nail art and <laughs> half their head shaved off. I was like, all right, I can, if, I, if they can do it, I can do it. Right. right. Yeah. So are there, any, are there any red flags that you should look for? Corporate culture is a really hard thing to nail down. It's not something that's written on the company's website. You just kind of have to walk in and get a feel for it. What are some of the ways that once you walk in on your first day and start interacting with everyone, how can you pick up those cues about corporate culture? Well, I would say eye contact for me is a big deal. I think that for me, you know, says a lot, like, does somebody even look at you when they speak or do they even speak? Mm -hmm. And better yet, like, you know, you know, when you walk past, does somebody suddenly close their office door? I don't know, something like that. But you know, there there are many subtle and blatant cues. I, one thing, for instance, like, um, do you find yourself being shut out of important information? Not so much about okay, they're not being asked out for a beer after work, but you know, are you finding out important information about your job or your department secondhand? Because I've been in that position where I'm like, okay, why is it this person who doesn't even work in my department or even on my floor know about this major drastic change? Well, it's because this person was friends with, you know, the boss. 
And you know, that can say some negative things about the culture, like that you may need to address or you may just realize this is not the place for me. So so that could be it, you know, like is there a very clear situation that can affect, you know, what type of information is being relayed or how's it being relayed? It can definitely be, I think, very important in terms of your job and what you need to know and pertinent changes that may affect you. Yeah, and on the other side of that, how do you try to establish a company culture or tell a new employee about it? You can tell people during the interview process. Um, one of the questions that um, I love to get from candidates is basically like, what's your favorite part about working here? Um, if you could say one thing about the company that makes it different from kind of every other startup in New York City, what would it be? Um, kind of before you, because you want to get a sense of that stuff before you go into the job. Um, so it's great to be able to ask those questions to hear from the interviewers, other employees um, in your department, outside your department, what kind of consistent set things they say about the company culture. Um, once you start to, a lot of companies, I know we do, we, we take corporate and, uh, company culture really seriously. So we have a list of core values they are actually posted in our kitchen. Um, so yeah, see, I would see if the company has core values um, written down anywhere, um, see if they have like any quirky kind of employee bios anywhere and just get a sense of, during the onboarding process of talking to people um, what kind of tools they have and, and email serves and stuff where you get a sense of what it's like. I think it's important to see like, like in terms of benefits, um, like does your company care enough in terms of like maybe doing charity work, do they give back, do they mm -hmm. give health insurance, do they have you know, different employee incentives or programs, do they celebrate people's birthdays, like one thing that that I liked um, when I first started at Sony, um, I got sent the company calendar. And one thing I noticed was that they put everybody's birthday on the calendar. I thought, well, I had never worked at a place where a job had done that. I mean, it was like, well, if you were friends with someone, so if you were friends with the secretary, <laughs> or if you were friends with somebody else, sure, they'd celebrate your birthday. But if you're not part of that clique, it's for you. But, you know, <laughs> you know, at least, you know, where I'm at, you know, you know your birthday is noted on a calendar. So I thought, wow, that's really cool. That to me said a lot about the culture that I like. Um, and they have, you know, so, I mean, it, it, it's something that's simple, like that, or it can be something bigger, like I said, 100% health benefits, which is something more major. So, you know, I look for that, or like, for instance, like right now, with the hurricane that's happened, mm -hmm. this is a great time to give back, or at Christmas in general, you know, does your company have, let's say, a toy drive or a book drive throughout the year? I mean, that to me said, that stuff, stuff like that is important to me, because I think you know volunteering and charity is important and giving back this is a lot about people. So you know, and you know, we gotta look at what's important to you. So Yeah, one really good clue that I got at one point was looking at the way the office is laid out and thinking about some of what that means. There are some offices where, you know, people its doors closed, it's not very open, you kinda of have to go up and knock on someone's door and that gives you a sense of all right, this is a company that's a little bit more formal mm -hmm. versus I worked in one company where there was a big open kitchen and there was a ton of food in it and people would go over there and hang out for 10 minutes in the middle of the day while they got a snack. So it really helped give me a sense even before I got to know any other employees of, hey, this is the way the company chose to design their space mm -hmm. and what does that tell me about them? Right. But, but yeah, so I think Leticia touched on something important which I'd like to talk about a little bit more, which is all the other stuff that comes with your job. You know, you're there, you're doing your work, but how do you maintain a work-life balance and how do you get your company to make that a priority? Well, I definitely think, first of all, that's something that kind of needs to try to be established early on. Because um, I think it's important to ask, for instance, one thing I, I definitely ask now is, you know, what are the general hours? Um, is, especially, you know, if you're dealing with more on a technical side with the creativity, like, is there overtime? Is it mandatory overtime? Is it, you know, volunteer overtime? What about vacation? Because even though legally in the U.S. you're supposed to get vacation, some jobs are can be very iffy <clears throat> about you so much as even taking a day off. I mean, I've been in positions where I, I literally gave like almost a two week notice that I needed a day off. Not not where I'm at now, but in the past, um, and got flack from my manager for like for one day off when I never taken time off. So you know you may you know be in a position where a company may expect you to be on call twenty four seven. Mm -hmm. So you may might think okay well. If they, for instance, like usually jobs need your contact information, of course, but is it just for an emergency purpose 
or do they want your cell phone, or do they want to give you a cell phone, because they expect you to get a, like you're in a, like, if you're on a dog tag, or in a dog chain, 24-7. Mm -hmm. That's something that you might need to look out for, because even though ideally, it might be great thinking, oh, my job's gonna give me a cell phone, and they're gonna pay for it, and they're gonna give me a PDA. Well, what's gonna be the trade-off for that? That might play into their company culture that you're supposed to be on call 24-7. Mm -hmm. So these are things that you might have to think about when you're, any questions that you have to ask when you, I think initially brought on, and you might need to even ask other people too, like, what's your work week like? Like, that's a question I typically tend to ask when I do interview, like, you know, what's a typical work day? What's a typical work week? What's a typical time structure? I, you know, ask that during an interview. I mean, really, and that's the best thing way you can start out getting a feel for that. So. And how can you, at a company, how can you ask for some of those things if they're not necessarily spelled out for you? I know that at my first assistant job, I was terrified to ask for those things, even though I was entitled to them. Mm -hmm. It said in the handbook I had X number of days vacation, but I was really intimidated by my boss, and I was the lowest person on the totem pole, so I never wanted to ask for those days. So how do you em empower employees to ask for what they think they need? Um, and this is, this is for everybody, so. Well, I think just be honest and give a fair amount of uh, time of, you know, if you're gonna take off I would say like a month or so, maybe more. Um, but I mean, you deserve those days. Like those days are given to you. You shouldn't feel like, oh, like you know, I can't. But um, talk to your boss about it because he probably knows about the work schedule. And if you're working in a team, you know, you have to figure out. Like especially during like Thanksgiving and Christmas time, everyone wants to take off. So like actually last week, um, me and my team just had a meeting about uh, who's gonna take off when because we need at least like you know, like two people to work. Um, so uh, yeah, again, communication and honesty. You know, if you, if, and you could take personal days. Like I was afraid to take personal days. I don't think I took like a personal day off of, like my first year. I was like, no, I shouldn't. Like it's my first year. I need to make like a good impression. But no, like you you could take a personal day. You're human. Like, um, do what you need to do, it's fine. Like, no one's gonna yell at you. Um, yeah. yeah, I would just ask about all that stuff early on. In the first couple, if you were first sit down with your boss within the first 30 days of starting. Um, like, how do you want me to, if you, if you know it's written in the guidebook, it's one thing, but every manager has different communication style. Just like, when I, when I do have these vacation days and I want to take vacation that I'm entitled to, how should I talk to you about it? Should I email you? Should I put it on a shared calendar? Should I come up to you? Should I, what, whatever the case may be, just to see how they prefer to kind of be communicated with those things. Um, and yeah, you're tight. You shouldn't feel sorry or, or shy about taking what, what you're giving them. Human. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I kind of learned this firsthand. I worked at a company where there were very specific hours. They were 10 to 6. People showed up exactly at 10 in the morning, but nobody left at 6. And we were all done with all of our work, but we all just sat around staring at each other because nobody wanted to be the first person to leave. <laughs> and, and I think that speaks to a deeper, this is kind of an American problem. Mm -hmm. In America, we don't have any national laws about how many vacation days we get, so it's up to your individual company and often up to your individual boss how much time you get off. And I think we convince ourselves, especially when the economy is really bad, that we should be super grateful to have any kind of job at all and that asking for a vacation day is somehow special treatment. And so I worked at this company and everyone sat around at six o'clock and finally one day I couldn't take it anymore. There was somewhere I had to be at 6.30. I was done with all my work. I just got up and I left. And as soon as I left, everybody else got into the elevator behind me. <laughs> and, and I realized that sometimes you have to be the first person. Um, if, if you're too scared to speak up and everybody else is too scared to speak up, then you're all just sitting around wasting your time staring at the wall when you've done all your work for the day. And, and so I think it's, it seems really scary when you're the youngest person there, or when you're new, or you're most recently hired, but somebody has to go first. Then there's data on your side. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so one more thing that I'd love to get to is the mentoring process. Um, I think a lot of us who had, career, or had uh, successful careers were lucky to find somebody a little further along who helped us out and guided us. How do you find that person? Um, I always find that my mentor has always been someone that I just like, really got along with, um, I mean, obviously, but um, I mean, um, I guess maybe start off with, with your 
boss. I mean, if your boss is a good guy, I mean, I, luckily I have a really good boss who's really involved and he's very supportive. Um, and we have a good relationship. Like, I'm very honest with him. Um, I recently told him that I'm interested in marketing and advertising. And he gave me um, a book that was like right on his desk. He's like, here, you can read this. Like, I'm letting you borrow this. And now we're just kind of building this relationship. Like, he knows my interests. And um, I think if you if you ask like um, if you ask you know this person um, about how how they got the job or their career path, um, and if it kind of matches up with what you want to do, I think that's really good. That like, probably like will be a good mentor. Um, and um, yeah, I mean I, I would definitely ask for advice or some tips, um, and, um, yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> Colleen, do either of you have mentorship programs in place at your companies? We're in the press of establishing one. Oh, okay. um, we've had, so far, um, kind of informal mentors, but, um, yeah, we want to formalize the process a little bit and pair people up with, um, you know, more senior members of the team who do do um, a job that they hope to do in the future. <laughs> so that's something we're actually working on right now, actually. Um, if, so I would find first thing that I would do, so if you get to a company, I would see if they have any formal um, internship, or internship, formal mentorship programs in place, and if so, see how you can get involved. Um, if not, I would, you know, settle in first, and, you know, you know do your job, do it really well, um, figure out kind of how to negotiate um, different members of the team. Um, but then I would, yeah, seek out people who are doing things that you're interested in, develop a rapport with them. Um, all of my kind of people I look up to are mentors are people I just have a good personal relationship with. Um, so then develop that and some of the mentorships that can come naturally after. Yeah. Yeah, um, there's no uh, formal mentorship where I'm at at Sony, but they've had um, interns and they've seen really value their interns. Um, and they've seen, you know, uh, you know, lead there in good standing and they'll stay there for a while at times. Um, I would say on my end, uh, where I'm at now, like, my boss is great. And, and you know, there's a, an incoming uh, person as well who's going to be a new boss. And you know, I've been able to basically speak with them both very openly about where they've been at in their careers, and that's been good. And even when I was in school um, and I did internships, and occasionally, you know, I would have a professor that I also really clicked with, either professionally in terms of style, artistic style, and, and personality to be able to talk openly and ask questions about, well, how did you get here, yada, yada, and, you know, do you have any recommendations? And, and it doesn't have to be a formal mentorship, like was mentioned before. It would just be somebody that, you know, you have a similar career um, interest in, but also hopefully a similar personality, because sometimes, you know, your personality can definitely plays a big mark on what type of career you're going to as well. Well, Dorita and Letitia, you both mentioned that you have a good relationship with your bosses and they kind of mentor you. What if it's not someone at your company? What if you want to have a mentor that's from outside your company? How do you find that person? Um, I think, believe it or not, volunteering can, you know, open up some amazing surprises and because, you know, there are people who are in, for instance, like the various elements of the nonprofit world, particularly in the creative world. That you know may end up you know you may end up having the best creative and personal rapport with them. Um, I could definitely say um, in terms of you know you might have to maybe even uh, research online that might be an outlet. I haven't done that for mentorship, but they I know there are different mentorship programs that might be a possibility, particularly for for college level kids and, and, and younger kids. Cool. This is one. There you go. Oh, right. Here, there you go. <laughs> 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 Should we open it as a Yeah, that would be great. So, um, 